Welcome everyone to my how-to video on assignment 7014B, Task Project Plan Memo. Okay, so to check out where we are, to check in, um, I'm going to open up our workflow diagram at the top of week 5 over here and talk to you about where we are. So, um, at this point we are still in assignment 7014, so we're still in the blue area. At this point you should have already submitted or your group manager should have already submitted um, your 7014A, so this should, everything to the left of this red line should already be submitted to me. You should have at this point already selected the business, already um, written your request for proposal, okay, um, and if you are lost and you don't know what this is, I do have a video about this part, so this task for 7014B. Um, and now you are ready to create a project plan. So basically the idea is that in the first part of 7014B, um, a business that you selected as a team created a request for proposal that you actually created um, that then went out to a bunch of companies, one of which was you. So at this point, Mega Consulting Group hypothetically receives the request for proposal from the business that you you uh, selected and now your uh, mega consulting team needs to create a project plan memo to Alex Nostrovia um, and so this is where we are right now in this project so basically you have this big memo and then a schedule of deliverables and you're done um, with 7014 so to get a better idea of what you are doing, let's go ahead and flip over to our assignment prompt. And to get to that, you can click on either of these 7014 links. They will both go to the same page. And this is it. So I'm going to scroll down. So you should have already done part A. Now we're on part B. You should have already done task number one and task number two. We are now looking at task number three. Um, this is what I will be referring to as the project plan memo just so that we don't get confused because you will be creating a proposal in assignment 7015. So for our own sanity, let's just refer to task number three for 7014B as the project plan memo. Okay, so basically what you are doing is um, in this case you are um, working for Mega Consulting Group and you've gotten word from Alex Nostrovia saying, hey, this business wants proposals and a bunch of teams working for Mega Consulting Group are trying to get assigned that job. So you're basically trying to put in a bid to Alex Nostrovia, trying to get selected as the team to address that business and to recruit that business as a client, okay? So you will be writing a memo, okay? So you should write this in memo format. And remember that this is a group project. You're only creating one memo for your entire group. The memo should be addressed to Alex Nostrovia, okay? Have a pro an appropriate subject line um, or RE line, okay? And this is the content that you should be covering. Right. Um, so, Basically, the purpose of this is trying to get approval to work on Project 7015. So in 7015, you are creating a proposal um, in response to that business you selected who has a challenge or a problem. Okay, so in 7015, you're trying to propose a solution um, to get that business to hire Mega Consulting Group. But before you can do 7015, you have to get approval from Alex Nostrovia to let you work on that project. So that's what this project plan memo is. You are creating a plan for the project 7015. Okay. And if your project looks like um, you have a solid plan and you know what you're doing and you've got the expertise, then Alex Nostrovia will assign you to write the proposal in 7015. Okay, so basically in this hypothetical situation you cannot get to 1715 and without doing this project plan memo successfully. All right, so um, the things that should appear in your project plan uh, memo are listed here. Okay, the project number, um, if there is one, um, 
the names of the personnel. So this would be your team. Okay, so you'd list your team's names. Um, and you might even address what are what each of your team members' expertise is, okay? So is somebody uh, focused on research? Is somebody focused on budget? And you can draw from your majors and from your actual experiences. Um, and also, you know, who's actually going to be doing what or who is going to have what specialties in the actual project you're doing for this class, okay? Um, the name and location of the business that you selected. So um, who is the business that you selected um, who you would want to be creating a proposal for? Um, so this is the same business that you selected over here, okay? So this business, okay? So you are writing to them. <laughs> I know it's confusing because you keep switching roles. Um, so the, the official name and the particular location you'll, your project will be focusing on. And then the challenge. And so basically you are describing in your own words what the challenge is. Um, and again, you're kind of drawing from the request for proposal that you already created. Okay. So hypothetically in this hypothetical situation, the business you selected wrote this request for proposal and in it, in, it includes a description of the challenge. And now, in the project plan memo, you also have to describe that challenge, okay? Um, but in this case, you wouldn't say we, you would say they, the business, uh, Expresso Royale. So you'd be using third person because you are no longer that business in this scenario. A list of the major deliverables. Okay, so this, is, this one's tricky. Um, this is not the deliverables that you are creating in 7015. These, this is the sort of thing that you are trying to advertise the goods and services of Mega Consulting Group that you're trying to sell to the business, okay? So this is basically your solution to their challenge, okay? That means before you can even get started on 7015, your group has to already know what you're trying to sell them, what your solution is, to their challenge or their problem, okay? So this has to be something that Mega Consulting Group can create or perform, okay? So you can't just give them an idea like you should move locations. You need to say Mega Consulting Group can create this marketing plan for you or Mega Consulting can do this hiring and training program for you. So it needs to be either a product or a service that Mega Consulting can uh, be paid to do, okay? And this is the, the really important part because that's basically what you're trying to sell in the proposal. And before you can get approval to write that proposal, you have to get Alex's approval uh, based off of, you know, what you think you can sell them, okay? So part E is extremely important. And if you're confused about what this content is, please feel free to contact me. And then finally, the last part is the names of the two in-class groups. You will uh, supply peer, um, who will be peer reviewing for you, okay? Um, so um, if you return over to our course Moodle, okay, under week five, 7014, 7015 groups, okay, if you open this, it will tell you who you are sending your drafts to in assignment 7015 to get peer review advice. So whomever you are sending your drafts to, that is who you list here. So you would list group, group three and group four and go ahead and list the names of the members of that group, okay? So in this paragraph you would say, um, you know, we are sending our internal communication and proposal to groups two and three, and the members of those groups include, and you would list the members of those groups. Okay, so that's what this means. In 7015, you will be required to have your internal communication and proposal drafts peer reviewed. And so all you're doing here in part F is telling Alex who is going to be providing you feedback. That's it. Okay. So that's the end of the memo. It's pretty straightforward. 
Um, the most challenging part is obviously identifying the product or service that you're going to try to sell the business that would solve their challenge, okay? That's the real tricky part of this memo, okay? The last thing I'm just going to briefly cover is the schedule of deliverables. It's the main, it's the last document of 7014B. Um, and then of course you put all of these things together and, and add a title page. So the schedule of deliverables, if you click on this link here, this page pops up. And at this point, you should have already created one of these for assignment 7009 when you were working on your own because um, 7009A requires a schedule of deliverables and 7009A is due before this project, this uh, 7014 part B. So you should have already created a schedule of deliverables for a different assignment so it should look familiar by now. So I'm just going to briefly touch on this and what is going to be different. Go ahead and, and scroll down our wiki page and click on this example. So as you should recall from 7009A, this is what your schedule of deliverables should look like. The differences between the one you created for 7009 and this one is, of course, the number will be different. So this will uh, say 7014 um, or yeah, uh, 70, 7014, and go ahead and say 7014-7015. Um, the date should be different. The client that you list will be different. So it should be the business that you selected. And you should find a, a CEO or a representative that's appropriate, like a real person who works for that business, okay? Um, the tax will obviously be different. Um, and the big thing that will be different is who is accountable. Um, so in 7009, it was an individual project, which means you did most of this work, but now you're in a team. So I want to be able to see who is taking charge of smaller documents. And so it's okay, even if the entire group is helping brainstorm and review and help with language, it's okay to have one person who's in charge of typing all that up, making the revisions and making sure it hits the criteria. Um, and that doesn't have to always be the group manager. So you can spread these documents out based off of people's strengths. And so I'd be, I'll be really interested to find out who is taking responsibility for these smaller documents in assignment 7015, okay? And then don't forget that this content here um, is the documents being sent to you for peer review. So this is what, these are the requests that you are receiving. And then these are the responses that you are receiving. Okay, so make sure that you uh, plan out all of those documents from 7015. Okay, so that is uh, something to keep in mind. So item number four for 7014B is the schedule of deliverables for assignment 7D15. Basically, you are again telling Alex, this is our plan for completing this next project if you give us approval, okay? Um, so you will, your group will need to research assignment 7015 pretty extensively in order to come up with a very um, accurate uh, schedule of deliverables that reflects its complexity of documents going back and forth, okay? Um, all right, so that's it. That is 7014B. Um, your group manager then should put all of these documents together. So the very first page of your, your group submission should be a title page. And then after that should be the revised group work agreement. And then your request for proposal. Then your project plan memo. And finally, your schedule of deliverables. And remember that this is a group project, so only your group manager should be submitting this for grading. Okay, that way I know um, which one is the correct version. All right, um, so I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any further questions um, or would like anything clarified, you can always bring those questions to our virtual classroom or shoot me an email. Thank you and good luck.